Welcome back. Moving forward, I'm going to demonstrate how to work with your text views. So in the previous lesson, we created a simple text view called heading, right? And we inserted the text. Here I'm going to navigate and also demonstrate several other tips and techniques that are useful as you begin to develop your apps and work within Android Studio environment. So let me go ahead and first zoom in. And this is the text that we inserted in our or text view that we inserted in our previous lesson. Now, there are a couple of ways you can work with the text views. You can either work within the design view, which you're actually looking at right now, or you can navigate to the text tab here on the bottom and then work with the XML. So either way, it doesn't really make any difference if you are comfortable working with the XML tags. Perfect, that's great. If you're working with the design window, that's okay too. The benefit, right? What's the what's the deal? What's the benefit of working either design or text view? Well, if you were to navigate to text view, you'll notice that each of these attributes, right? Like the text view has the image view and then text view again. You can easily see the values here. So for instance, if you have a certain specific requirement of an image size or width you can place the same or visualize or take a look at all of the same values within the text view which is your xml in design it's a little bit difficult to see the values because you don't see the actual values you just see visually where the image or the text view is placed so we go back and forth, certain developers, they're comfortable with just XML, right? They will just code out the XML and it'll look like this, or you can navigate to the design view. So I'm gonna demonstrate both briefly. So here we have a text view that we just created in the previous lesson. Let's take a look at how we can work and learn some more about working with our text view. So I'm gonna go ahead and click twice, and this brings up the attributes for this text called heading. So this is the text. I can, of course, change the heading if I like. So if I need to change it to, say, clay desk, for example, and click anywhere, it's going to change to this particular text. So the attributes are several, OK? The basic attributes are listed here within the palette, right? This is the palette. And then you'll notice there's an ID called text view, which is camel case. The ID is important at times as we progress further, you'll learn more about this because this can be uniquely identified with this particular text view. So right now the ID is text view. I can of course change it to any other ID as per my own requirement. One thing I wanna demonstrate quickly is the constraints here. Of course, I'm gonna build on this in future lessons, but since we're working with the text view, and before I demonstrate the, the constraints, let me make this smaller and also make this window a little smaller. There we go. The tool that I like to uh, discuss and mention here is the design surface. So right now you'll see two screens on your canvas area, and they're both the same. But what is the difference? Well, one is your main screen that you see visually, right? And the other one is your blueprint of the same screen. So you'll notice there's an image, it just says image view. There's a text, there's a text view, and so on. So if you need to work more closely, you can always switch to the blueprint. In order to switch, let's click on the Select Design Surface tool, the drop down arrow, and you'll notice there are a couple of options. I'm going to go ahead and click on blueprint, and this only shows me the the blueprint for the first screen or layout. Now, if I were to zoom in, you'll notice that it's easier for me to kind of see and visualize my text view. The benefit is the fact that now I can work with this layout as well. And the reason being because on the right side, on the same toolbar within my canvas area, I'll see the red exclamation mark, which means there are some warnings or errors that I need to fix. 
And one of the errors, if I click on this tool, it'll bring up the errors and the warnings as well. So here I can see that there's a missing constraint in constraint layout. And then of course the same is repeated twice because it seems like I have two views that are missing some type of constraints. So let me close this for now. We'll come back to this. So on the attributes area in the palette, once you have the text view selected, notice there's a box that shows the four corners and the four plus signs. So there's several ways, again, you can work with this text box. You can click on the arrows within the box to wrap content. That is on the top side. On the bottom, you can also use the bottom to wrap content and so forth. So for instance, if I were to click on, let's say the top to wrap content, you'll notice the layout width and the layout height would change. And it shows the layout height of 19 dp, so get our pixels. And this box inside kind of shows the lines instead of the arrows. Similarly, I can use the wrap content here on both sides, so it's now fixed. At 51 dp is the layout width, and the layout height is 19 dp. The plus signs on the outer side of this box are the constraints. So in other words, I can create a connection to the left, for this text view, connection to the bottom, to the right, and to the top. So let's go ahead and try it out. So if I were to click on this plus sign on the top, it creates the connection. And if I scroll, zoom out a little bit, so you can see that now there is a connection being created or a line being drawn, and the text view is now fixed to the top, and the height is 57 okay so similarly i can create a connection to the left to the right and this kind of shows me the width right so the left is 167 and the right is 166 which means it's not really in the center right so it's easy for me to now center it by changing the value and now the text box is centered Okay, so even the one DP or one uh, size that you're using matters. Okay, so this is a nice way where you can work with it. Similarly, I can create a connection below and it joins with the image view because there's an image view on the bottom. So this text view is now constrained itself with the image view. If I move the image view, notice the dotted line still follows the image. So it's very helpful that way, depending on, again, your layout and your style of your text view and image view. So if I need to center this from the top and equal it, in other words, I can simply change this to 57 also value, and this is going to move the text view a bit down. Perfect. So once again, you can easily work with your layout constraints in this manner as well. Now let's go back to our warnings here on the top right. And notice now we have only one missing constraint in constraint layout because we took care of one of them. So let's scroll down, let's close this warning for now, and take a look at our image. So it seems like our image is not constrained, right? Because it looks like it's free floating. It's not really constrained because otherwise I will see the squiggly lines next to it. So let's say if I need to constrain the image view, so make sure you select the image view, click twice, and you'll come back to the same way. I'm gonna go ahead and constrain it on the top, to the bottom, to the left and right. And I'm gonna make sure this is also 138, 138, and then 40, Two or make it 47, 47. Again, these are just values that I'm demonstrating. You can make your own constraints. You can, of course, drag now the image and place it anywhere you like. But now it's being constrained. And of course, we have our ID for the image view. We have the layout width and the layout height as well. So if I scroll, zoom out a little bit, you'll notice. But now I have 
all of these three, which is two text views and one image view, being constrained. I can remove the constraint or delete a connection right from my blueprint area. So if I were to click this square or circle, rather, it's going to delete the connection. In order to make the connection, I can drag directly from the blueprint and drag it right here. Similarly, I can delete on the left side or create a connection by dragging it and joining it to the left. Perfect. So that way, you can very easily work with the text views or image view as per your own requirement. Now, if I navigate to the warnings here, notice both of my red warnings, right, that I need to get rid of are gone. Perfect. However, there's still a couple of other warnings, such as image without content description. In other words, this image view does not have a content description. And there's some text that is hard coded. So let's first take a look at the image without content attribute. So the missing content description attribute on the image are simply non textual widgets like image views and image buttons that should use the content description attribute to specify a textual description of the widget, such as the screen readers and other accessibility tools. It's like that alt image, if you recall the HTML, CSS basics, okay? So let's go ahead and give this a content description. So I'm gonna click twice on the image view here and scroll down. And here's the content description. So I'm gonna say my, you can call it any. So as soon as I do this, You'll notice this part warning has disappeared. Now I'm only left with the hard coded text. So, what's hard coded text? We are already aware. It's simply hard coding the text called play desk. If I scroll up right here, it's a text view. We should use at string resource. So, in the next lesson, I'm going to show you how to actually hard code or not hard code rather, right? Use the string for this just so that you get a better practice at it. But in this lesson, I just wanted to demonstrate how to work with your basic text view and then putting up some constraints as well. So I hope this helps practice with this and let's move to the next lesson.